Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Noah Shahar. And my name is Aaron Beer, and we are both part of the Tech Lab team at Post Finance. Uh, Post Finance, Finance is the Post Bank of Switzerland. And yes, let us share with you today our insight into a production ready high pleasure fabric certificate authority. Yeah, to begin, let's look at some fundamentals first. Um, in the upper part, in the yellow boxes, we have some concepts uh, related to public key infrastructure. And underneath, in blue, um, the implementation hyperledger fabric. And now we go step by step through those uh, terms. First one is identity. In uh, hyperledger fabric, it's very important because uh, it's a private permissioned blockchain. So every entity participating in the network has to be identifiable. Um, this identity is used to produ produce signatures. Um, they are to ensure the origin and the integrity uh, of a message and also for TLS, transport layer security, uh, to answer the question, who is my communication partner? Continuing with asymmetric cryptography, also called public key cryptography, um, this term consists of a key pair which consists of public and a private key. Uh, this key pair can be used for encryption, uh, which we will not go uh, further into in this presentation, but uh, very important digital signatures. And um, there we have the sign. Uh, we do this with the private key of the key pair, and this can only do the admin or the owner, uh, better said, of the key pair. And the verify uh, procedure of a digital signature uh, can be done by every participant of the network with the public key. Now it comes together in this uh, public key infrastructure term, uh, also called PKI for short. Um, this is like the assignment of an identity uh, to a public key. And the identification is done by a trustworthy authority, uh, which issues digital certificates. So we call this uh, authority the Certificate Authority, the CA. The digital certificates uh, contain information about the identity attributes, uh, the public key, and the signature of the CA. By ITU, there is a standard set, uh, which is called X.509, uh, which we will use in our uh, solution. There is also an important part, the hierarchy of certificate authorities, um, which can, uh, PK can be built on. And this uh, is like built up by a root CA and intermediate CA and operative CAs, which builds those CA layers. And those layers represent the chain of trust. And now the implementation of Hyperledger Fabric and there's the Hyperledger Fabric Network, uh, which consists typically of uh, organizations, which are companies participating in the network. And, they belong, and there are identities which belong to the, those organizations, uh, and they can be type of peers, orders, clients, and admins. Next, we have the crypto material. Uh, this term includes all cryptographic artifacts of an identity. Um, containing the uh, key pair, uh, consisting of public and private key, uh, the digital certificate and the chain of trust, uh, which contains all CA certificates uh, up to the origin, which is the root CA. And those two combined, like the PKI uh, version, uh, in the implementation of uh, Hyperledger is the Hyperledger Fabric CA, uh, which handles the whole life cycle of identities and crypto material. So issuing with registering and enrolling identities and also renewing and revoking of certificates is included. And there is the global MSP. MSP stands for Membership Service Provider and this is a directory structure which is built and the name is very misleading because uh, this MSP doesn't uh, service or provides anything actively and it's really only a folder and a certificate st structure. 
The global MSP contains all issued crypto material uh, for an organization. And the global MSP contains a local MSPs. A local MSP contains all crypto material for a single end entity. This local MSP can later be distributed to the network's uh, nodes. And now some definition uh, to, to improve the understanding of the rest of the presentation. So when we talk about an intermediate CA, we uh, mean every CA except the root CAA. When we talk about an operative CA, uh, we mean an intermediate CA uh, on the lowest layer. Uh, and this CA manages the end entity crypto material. And when we talk about signing CA, we mean an operative CA, which only issues certificates for the usage digital signature. Yes. So now let's dive right in and see how we got started with Hyperledger Fabric Certificate Authority. We started off with a simple Fabric blockchain network with which we wanted to go into production mode. Now we had two peers and three orders running and uh, these ran on Kubernetes and communicated with mutual TLS with each other. The cryptographic material was generated by CryptoGen. Now you may ask, what is CryptoGen? Well, CryptoGen is a tool uh, developed by Hyperledger Fabric to generate initial key material to then uh, start uh, a Hyperledger Fabric network. The tool consists of a binary and a config file. You see the config file on the right on the screen. This is a very simple config file in which we can configure things like for how many peers or how many users we want cryptographic material. And that's where our problem arised. Now, we wanted to go into production and in the read the docs it says for CryptoGen it would normally not be used in the operation of a production network and the tool is provided for development and testing only. So we wanted to go into production but had CryptoGen in use. Big problem. Now CryptoGen is like a one-way ticket. It can easily issue crypto material but there are many other features that are necessary for a production network that it can't provide. Yes, then we had a closer look at what the PKI has to provide because CryptoGen plays this part in our network. And like the Aaron said, the one-way ticket is the issuing of a certificate. We see this in this a little bit complex uh, illustration of the life cycle of identity and certificate. So now uh, CryptoGen doesn't meet our requirements and so we built this uh, a diagram to have a closer look what uh, our solution has to provide. So what is this in detail now? Um, very important is that the identity is connected with the certificate and because of CryptoGen we only issue uh, certificates itself. Um, there's no identity part and also the rest of the whole life cycle of certificates and identities um, has to be covered. So we searched for products that fulfill this criteria and we found out that Fabric has its own CA solution uh, which is called the Fabric Certificate Authority, um, which manages the network's identities and can issue, revoke and renew a crypto material. So there, is also, there are also two binaries that come with uh, Fabric CA. Uh, the first one is the Fabric CA server, um, which can run a CA server with different options uh, that we can configure in different ways and has a database connected uh, to persist identities and crypto material re related stuff. And then we have Fabric CA Client, uh, which is the interactive command entry um, to communicate with the Fabric CA server. Now, if we compare those two solutions, CryptoGen and Fabric CA, uh, we can see that the, uh, the features uh, included in Fabric CA uh, um, are or like we expect that in a, produ in a production network, um, but uh, this, we already thought that this would require a, a more knowledge and more work to implement this solution uh, due to the higher complexity. So nevertheless, we decided uh, to implement Fabric CA 
And uh, while researching, uh, we came across many clever concepts, um, but however, we had to overcome many obstacles uh, during our implementation. Uh, this was mainly because detailed examples of the implementation were, were not provided on the web, and especially regarding the Fabric CA hierarchy we wanted to build, um, there were no, was not uh, that much like tutorials or detailed examples. So we want to share our solution now uh, with the community. Uh, we found several options regarding the hierarchy uh, in the read the docs and we discussed them as a team and I will present to you them now. The first one is like uh, how we build the layers of the hierarchy. As a first option, we saw the possibility to just uh, run a Fabric CA as a root and at the same time as an operative CA. So every end entity crypto material uh, is issued by the CA. The next option uh, in the middle uh, is a root CA, which issues only the crypto material uh, for the CAs uh, underneath and can be offline uh, afterwards after issuing those crypto material. And the operative CA uh, underneath, uh, which uh, issues the crypto material for the rest of our network. There's a third solution, this is quite similar uh, to the second one, um, but there are uh, one or multiple layers in between the root CA and the operative, and with this we can extend like the chain of trust. But our team uh, committed for the second option because it's like the, the uh, multi-level architecture or hierarchy we wanted to build uh, to generate the chain of trust. And, uh, in case of compromised net to, uh, crypto material, we would uh, handle this uh, way faster and didn't have to have to exchange the whole crypto material. And this is uh, not that complex compared to the third option, which is similar, uh, but uh, this is like, would be an overkill, the third one. Then by separating TLS and signing CA was also another decision. We see this in option two. We would build two uh, operative CA, one for TLS and one for the signing certificates. And the other option would just be uh, provide those two uh, different certificates in the same operative CA. And again, we voted as a team for the second option uh, because with this we can build a separate chain of trust for TLS and signing and handle the the certificate types independent. So in case of using an HSM, a hardware uh, security module, um, this can be uh, done in the configuration uh, far easier. And another decision we took by uh, choosing one of those options. Uh, the first one is to provide a signing CA and a TLS CA uh, for our whole network. And the other one is to separate those uh, the peer and order stuff um, and providing an, a separate CA for each of them. And as a team, we decided to go with the option two uh, because we thought this was more reasonable. And then to our seat setup in detail, um, first we use OpenSSL to generate a root uh, we do this by, uh, so by generating a self-signed certificate, uh, which uh, comes with a private key, of course. Um, then we have this uh, second part uh, where we issue uh, the CA crypt material uh, for all our operative CAs. Um, this is also a digital certificate and a private key. And in the addition to this, we also have a chain file which represents the chain of trust, which consists at this part only of the root CA certificate. To keep our illustration a little bit simpler in the following slides, um, we mark this with the red folder. So now if we look at the total or the full setup uh, that we generate with OpenSSL, uh, we see that next to the root crypto material we have the CA crypto material for all our operative CAs, uh, which are listed here. And then we can continue with the CA Fabric CA servers. 
So for this, uh, we prepare first the TLS CA server. And um, because if we choose to split signing in TLS CA, we first have to bring up the TLS CA. And we do this by uh, mounting the crypto material from OpenSSL uh, into the container and configure this. And afterwards, we can launch the Fabric CA server and the TLS certificate with the private key is generated automatically by the server. Again, for the next step, we uh, use another color this time. Uh, we use this orange folder to mark the TLS uh, crypto material. Uh, with the TLS CA server running, we can continue with the signing CA server. Um, there again, we just prepare the, the, the server by configuring uh, or mounting the CA crypto material from OpenSSL. Then we enroll uh, the identity for the uh, signing CA server. Uh, we register uh, the identity first, of course, so that we can enroll it uh, on the TLS CA. And we get from this TLS CA server uh, the TLS uh, certificate with the belonging uh, private key. So when we have this, we, we have to configure, of course, the TLS section also, and then we can finally launch uh, the signing CA server. So now to get a quick overview uh, after those detailed steps, uh, we look once again at the OpenSSL part uh, where we issue a, a self-signed uh, certificate. Then underneath the, the CA crypto material containing the chain file, the ZIP digital certificate and the private key for every operative CA. Then we continue by configuring the TLS CAEs, um, also, of course, for the peer and order, like we have chosen in our de decisions. Um, there first, we mount the OpenSSL uh, CA crypto material uh, and configure it. Uh, then we can already launch the TLS CA server and the TLS crypto material is generated automatically. Then we continue with the signing CAs, also for peer and order. There first, we also mount the OpenSSL CA crypt material, register an identity for the signing CA on the TLS CA, and then roll it. So we get the TLS crypt material. And last but not least, we are ready to issue uh, identities and issue the belonging certificates to the rest of our fabric network. Yes, and how that works, let's look at it step by step. First of all, we have a fabric tools container. That's a simple container which contains the fabric CA client binary. And with this container, we communicate to all of our CA servers. Uh, this uh, container also includes our global MSP and uh, our, all of our local MSPs included in the global MSP. Of course, you see here two uh, examples of local MSPs. There will be all the others as well. Now, it is very important to mention that we have one single database for both TLS and signing CA. That means we generate the crypto material for the same identity for both TLS and signing which also means that it, it is much easier to manage for us uh, in case of compromised crypto material. Now let's look at the step of issuing end entity crypto material step by step. First of all, we have to register an identity. We take an as, exa as an example a peer. Uh, so we register a peer identity. On which CA we do this doesn't matter because once again, uh, the CAs share the same database. So we can do this on the TLS CA, for example. Then as the next step, we enroll this, gen uh, this created identity on the TLS CA. Uh, then the TLS CA persists that identity in its database. And as the next step, we can enroll this identity. Uh, uh, yes, I was in enrolling, sorry. Uh, so the TLSCA doesn't 
uh, it already has persisted its identity in the database. So now it persists the crypto material from this identity. And in the Fabric Tools container, we get a, a copy of this generated crypto material. As the next step, we enroll the exact same identity on the signing CA. The signing CA persists that crypto material that was generated in the database. And once again, in the Fabric Tools container, we get a copy of this generated crypto material. Now, it is important to mention that we have the TLS crypto material saved under slash TLS and the signing crypto material saved under slash MSP. The next step is to uh, organize and rename all of our files contained in this local MSP. Uh, how we do this in detail, I'll explain, I, I'll explain later. So now we are ready to configure our peer to mount this local MSP, which is ready. And when it is mounted, uh, the peer can be launched. Uh, it is important to mention that the same exact process works for the orders as well. The peer is just an example. So now let's look at the organizing and renaming part of our crypto material. As an example, we have this Fabric CA client command to enroll the peer1 identity on the CA peer. Uh, the M flag defines under which path the, the generated crypto material is saved in the Fabric Tools container. Now, when we execute this command, we get the following file structure. We have the sign certs folder with the generated certificate. We have the key store folder with the corresponding private key. Then we have the intermediate certs folder, which contains the chain file and the CA certs folder, which contains the CA root certificate. Now we do some renaming to make things easier for us. First of all, we rename the private key to a name which isn't that cryptic anymore. We add a minus chain to the name of the chain file so we know it is a chain file. And we, we remove the ports from the file names so, uh, because we think they are unnecessary, unnecessary for our case. At the right you see the, uh, the final uh, local MSP for the signing crypto material. Yes. Now, while setting up this structure we presented, we had a lot of learnings, a lot of important learnings, and the most important ones we want to share with you right now. First of all, we noticed that Fabric CA has a configuration hierarchy. For almost all uh, config properties, we can define them in three ways. As an example, when we want to define the CA certificate for the CA server, we can do that, first of all, uh, by providing a flag in the Fabric CA server start command. We can also do it by setting an environment variable in the Fabric CA server uh, container, or we can define it in the config file of the Fabric CA server. And now there is the hierarchy that is important to, uh, to, de to detect. The flags override the environment variables and those override the config files. So when we specify a CA certificate when starting the server in the with a flag, all, all the, other prop, uh, the same property in the other ways to configure it are overridden. Yes, another uh, learning now in the Fabric CA server config file. We are here in the signing section of this config file and it's about the attribute max path length. This attribute uh, is specified by a number and it says how many CA certificates can be issued below this layer of CA. That means a number of one in the max path length attribute would mean that no CA certificates can be issued underneath this CA. This CA can only issue end entity certificates. Now, a simple example, when we have a Fabric CA hierarchy with two layers, a root and an operative layer, we would choose the value of one in the root layer and the value of zero in the operative layer. 
And in our example, because we have no Fabric CA server as the root, we generate the root crypto material with OpenSSL, and we only have one layer of operative CAs, we dare choose the value of zero for, for the property max path length. Now, another attribute in the same uh, signing section. Uh, we have these different profiles we can enroll certificates with. We see here the default profile and the CA profile. And there is this attribute called isCA, and this attribute uh, defines uh, if the profile en enrolls a CA certificate. In the profile CA, there is this attribute default set to true, which means when enrolling an identity with the CA profile, it enrolls a CA certificate. But that's exactly where we made a big mistake, because we thought when enrolling with the CA profile, we get a signing certificate, which isn't true. For getting a signing certificate, we have to enroll with the default profile, or no profile at all, because it is the default one, and then we get a signing certificate, because the usage of the default profile has the digital signature. And one last learning which was very important for us is the usage of the chain certificates. Now we never really knew where to use the root CA certificate and where to use the chain file. And it turns out that everywhere in the orderer and peer configs where there is a root certificate wanted you have to specify the chain file and not the root CA certificate. In the documentation that isn't that, clear, that clearly mentioned, so it is important to take away. And now let's take some conclusions over all of this. First of all, we asked ourselves if this was really worth it. And we want to be honest, uh, for us the step from CryptoGen to Fabric CA at the moment has hardly paid off. We invested a lot of time and hard work and at the moment our network just runs the exact same like it did before, like there's no big difference seeable. But, and this is very important, we no longer only have a one-way ticket. So when we are looking into the future, uh, we experienced Fabric CA as a reliable, technical, mature solution. So in case of an incident with our crypto material, we are now ready to react as of before we weren't. So, and that's worth very much, we have to say. And for all of you, uh, it is definitely worth it because the step for you now has just gotten a little bit smaller. But talking about the future, there is one important topic to mention that has to be studied before you can go into production mode with Fabric CA. Uh, there are many other, yes, uh, the topic is manage managing the entire crypto, uh, crypto material lifecycle. Uh, in this presentation, we covered the issuing part of the certificates in all detail, but there is also the part of revoking certificates, generating certificate revocation lists, making channel updates and re-enrolling certificates, which really ha have to be studied, but we have no time in our presentation to cover these as well. Yes, we just presented to you our whole journey and what, is, what it all was worth it. So we asked ourselves, what can all of you take away from all of this? And we thought, well, there are many things. But nevertheless, we want to tunnel down on one specific key takeaway. Because while we were working on this presentation, we came across a fundamental insight for us. Uh, that explains most of the problems we faced while working with Fabric CA. And that is, most of the problems when working with Fabric CA are linked to other topics and concepts. Just like at the begin beginning of the presentation in the fundamentals part, we had to explain to you the different concepts so you would understand the rest of the presentation. When working with Fabric CA, you have to have deep knowledge and understanding in these topics to not run into problems. Uh, we experienced that we can't just read the docs and be good to go. And that's exactly where we lacked. 
because most of the time when we understood the topics and concepts, all of our problems were almost solved immediately. Yes, and we have decided to contribute. Um, we believe a contribution to the read the docs doesn't fit as well because, like mentioned, the information there is really scattered and like mentioned in our key takeaway, there are many other topics that should be known but have no place in the read the docs. So what we want to do is provide this presentation as like a full-on cookbook for the topic production ready Hyperledger Fabric Certificate Authority Server Hierarchy. Yes. <laughs> and we are clarifying if we can contribute to uh, a simple version of our fabric network to the Fabric Samples GitHub or a similar GitHub page. Yes, that's it. Thank you for your interest and uh, we are happy to try to answer your questions. So are there any questions? We have like 10 minutes left. Yeah, Alex. <laughs> Yes, uh, Alex asked if we uh, combined those servers in one server instance or we have uh, those running uh, like parallel and it's the second option. Uh, we decided to run them uh, by using single server instances for every CA. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the question was this time uh, why we don't want to contribute to the read the docs. Um, a tutorial would also be useful. And we think that is right. We tried to, to search for those uh, like uh, parts in the read the docs and we found multiple very good examples for the CA, uh, Fabric CA server and Fabric CA client binary, uh, how they can be used. But like for a tutorial of Fabric CA, um, we struggled to, to find like the space in the read the docs because Fabric CAs, uh, when we run this in a single instance, um, it's very well documented. We uh, thought that we can uh, develop or admin, uh, work with this documentation very well, but like the hierarchy is it's, like never mentioned clearly in the read the docs. So we decided or we thought that uh, uh, in the samples, it would be uh, more accurate, but if you can show us the, the section where you think this would be accurate. Okay, that's good. Okay, nice to know, and we are happy to pr uh, contribute uh, at all, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so this exact solution we presented, we have now running for half a year or so, so not that long, but uh, we, uh, we uh, researched a lot of stuff about re-enrolling, generating certificate revocation lists and what to do in case of compromised material, so we are ready in a case of anything would happen. But yes, uh, the struggles we never really experienced until this point. Yeah, we can say we have done a cron job uh, running on Kubernetes uh, to find out if a certificate will expire soon. So uh, not a single certificate is expired by now, but we can test uh, the whole exchange with uh, revoking a certificate and we have done this and all the pain which comes, uh, with, like Aaron said in the presentation, uh, with the renaming stuff at, at the very end but uh, in before like the revoking, the creating the revocation list and the channel config updates, uh, like we, mean, we managed to do this uh, by now, but uh, yeah, the PKI is, is not uh, completed anyway soon. It, it's running uh, to the end of the life of this uh, solution, yeah. 
Yeah, the following question. Yeah, the topic at this time was the connection of identities related to uh, between Fabric CA and Hype Ledger Indie. And yeah, we're pretty new to Indie, so uh, we uh, like implemented uh, a solution with Fabric CA. So we're, we're kind of new, and if we want to discuss this with uh, some other contrib contributors, uh, we're open to do this, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, they have a production uh, ready Indy in Geneva, so that we're located in Bern. It's like uh, not that big distance, yeah. Alex, once again. The uh, question was if we came across uh, using the private key as a password, uh, with a password, exactly, and this is a topic we didn't cover actually, and I heard it for the first time. Uh, so I, I, I never, uh, I've never seen uh, anything like that in the Fabric CA realm. Yeah, it's important to mention that we issue identities and the crypto, uh, crypto material for like technical users, so are all our peers and no, uh, orders running, um, they use our crypto material and like the whole uh, client stuff we handle uh, with our partner, which provides the front end uh, network and we only handle the fabric network. So we issue uh, like technical identities. Well, we issue also identities for the uh, clients which communicate to us, but these clients are applications and not end users. Yeah, thank you. You have another question or? I came in late so I'll ask you later, just if you ever got re-enrolled to work. Uh, yes, we got it to work, but uh, uh, the question was if we ever got re-enrolled to work and we got it to work, uh, but we didn't cover it in this presentation because we had no space for it. Yeah, we did it by revoking a certificate and expiring certificates. We we had not until yet, because we are uh, running this since half a year. Yeah, yeah if that's it, uh, we're happy that you were here and thank you for interest uh, once again. Thank you very much.